Hey there, I am Dylan John, and this is a step-by-step -step walkthrough that you guys suggested. Laura BC suggested a Joker color grade, and so that's what we're gonna be doing today. You can follow along with us, so if you wanna download this clip and go through the steps that we're about to go through, then I would suggest doing that, it'll help you to learn. This is a long clip, so we will need to transform it to Rec. 709. So we're gonna go ahead and use Color Finale 2 Pro, the plugin today, and the reason I'm doing that, before you click off people who don't have the plugin, Color Finale 2 Pro is the only way that you can achieve the look that we're about to go through. And if you doubt that, I suggest you just stick around and, and see why that is. I'll explain as we go through. But if you're into color grading and advanced color grading within Final Cut Pro, Color Finale 2 Pro is a no-brainer. This is not sponsored by them in any way. I just, it's one of my favorite plugins. So this clip is obviously log footage, so we'll need to transform this to Rec. 709. And instead of using an input LUT from Sony, we're gonna go ahead and use what we have available in Color Finale 2 Pro that works e even better than input LUTs, uh, which is the Aces Color Transform. So we'll select Aces. Luckily, my log profile is on here. Uh, hopefully they add more, but so we'll select S log three and the output is Rec. 709, 100 nits. Now let's hop into our layers panel. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is color correct the shot. So when color correcting, you need to ask yourself, what are our known variables in the shot? What are our anchors that we can rely on to help us color correct? You got whites, grays, blacks, and most importantly, skin tones. So let's use my skin. So let's use the image analysis tool and we'll crop into my skin. My exposure is sitting right. Skin should generally be anywhere from 30 to 75 IRE, depending on skin color and the environment. Let's switch to vector scope and check the color of my skin. And it's okay. We do have, I do have warm, light that's casting on my face here. So that's why it's pushing towards the red quadrant. But overall, it's not bad. So the first thing we're gonna do is adjust the contrast of the shot. Let's get it closer to what our eyes would see naturally if we were there at that location. So let's bring down our shadows exposure slider, which is this lift wheel, this master slider here. And that adjustment actually is all we need. If I turn this off and on, we're just bringing our uh, shadows down to help us add contrast. And in doing so, because the color wheels make gradual adjustments to different luma values of your shot. So for example, if you adjust the exposure of your shadows wheel, it's gonna gradually affect your midtones and a little bit of your highlights. So by pulling down the exposure of our shadows, we were also pulling down the exposure of our midtones and a little bit of our highlights. This is the same for the color wheels in Final Cut Pro as well. And let's go ahead and rename this. Another reason why I love Color Finale Pro, we'll call this Contrast and Sat. So up next, let's color balance the shot. It's looking a little warm. And if you can't tell that, no worries. You can use your RGB Parade, which should be your most used scope for color balancing. So we have the three channels, red, green, and blue independently. And you'll notice by looking at the parade that we have an elevated red channel. It's sitting higher, especially in the midtones. It's sitting higher than the green and blue channels, as well as in the shadows. But I do want to point out that I am wearing a red shirt, so there is going to be some elevated red where my shirt should be, maybe right about here, as well as my skin, because skin tone tends to leave an elevated red channel with the green and blue being fairly the same for the most part. So that's going to be accurate. However, this area, which is going to be this wall right about here, and we can verify that by cropping in. So let's use the ellipse tool and let's bring it over to this wall. This wall is white. So the fact that this red channel is sitting higher than the green and blue tells us that the shot is not balanced. Pure white should have the red, green, and blue channels be perfectly even. So let's go about correcting that. So let's bring up our log wheel so we can hop over to offset which is essentially the global wheel in Final Cut Pro. We're going to take the slider and we're gonna move it away from this warm quadrant, away from the red. And by doing that, you'll see as I pull down and push away that we're balancing out our shot. And I just ping pong back and forth trying to find a good range. Okay, then let's toggle off that ellipse. And if I turn this off and on, you'll see that that balanced out the shot quite a lot. 
First though, let's go ahead and rename this. Let's just call it color balance. And now let's get to creating a look. So I am going to add a log wheel again. Actually, I will add a log wheel and a color wheel here. We're going to invert this, invert parent mask. Basically what I'm gonna be doing is isolating my skin and the background. So this right here is gonna be the background and this is gonna be my skin. And then we will group them. We can be on top of it and just name it. We'll call it look adjustment. And then let's add the mask. And we'll go to the HSL mask. We'll make sure we select the picker here. We'll select my skin. We're gonna go to display and composite mask so we can see what we're doing. So everything that is within the white is can be adjusted with this skin adjustment. And then everything that's black will be adjusted by this background correction. So let's do what we can to try and select my skin as best as possible without selecting the background. This is the best we're gonna get. So let's go with it. Let's stop there. And you're able to do this within the basic tools in Final Cut Pro with the H HSL mask in Final Cut. But the issue lies in the fact that there's no ability to blur the mask. This is a big issue and I'll show you why. So before I go about adjusting the shot, let's pull up our frame so we can see what we're doing in a side by side. So you can go to window, show in workspace and go to comparison viewer or hit control command six and uh, automatically that's gonna bring up the shot because it's right next to the clip. However, if you don't want that clip on your timeline, what you can do is click frame browser down here and then you would just, oh, I made a mistake. You wouldn't hit that just yet because that selects the frame on the playhead. Let's delete and let's bring the playhead right here uh, and then hit the plus. So there, it saved the frame. And now let's put the scope side by side. So let's go back to our shot here and we'll go up to view and go down to vertical layout. So now we have these two that are side by side and this is about to come in handy big time. So let's go to offset, which is gonna adjust the overall background. There are shadows, midtones, and highlights in the background. And we're gonna pull the hue slider towards this kind of teal seafoam green um, quite a lot because there's, there's just a, it's a pretty thick color. And let's try and find that color as best as possible. And you'll notice already our image is starting to tear apart. You notice that right here? This is what happens if I was to try to use the HSL mask that's built into Final Cut. Because there's no option to blur this selection, it's gonna look like that, unfortunately. So watch this, let's hop back into the mask and we'll select the HSL mask. We'll go to blur and we'll just smooth this out. You notice that? If I go back and forth, it just smooths out all of those pixels that were breaking apart on us and makes it a much smoother looking grade. The next thing we can do is hop into our skin adjustment and we'll go to our gamma slider, which is usually where skin tones lie. Skin tones generally lie in the mid-tones, which is gamma. So let's take our hue slider and we're gonna push away from the orange. I'm, uh, there's way too much orange in my skin. He is just kind of a gross, sickly color. So let's try and match that by pushing in some of that blue. Not too much, we can fine tune and tweak it in a second. And that looks fine, we'll park it there and let's close up this correction. Up next, what I would like to do is start taking out some of the saturation in my shirt because it's a little too distracting. So we're kind of pushing into secondary corrections here for the most part. Let's go to Hue versus Sat, which adjusts the intensity of color and whatever color you select. So we'll use the dropper and select this color red. And let's pull down, okay. Something else I would like to do is lower the brightness of some of this blue and we will adjust the contrast of the outside in a second, uh, but we can hop in to Hue versus Luma and make an adjustment to this blue. Now, word of warning with Hue versus Luma, you're gonna wanna make a very, very small push because big pushes with this curve will absolutely tear apart your image. 
So let's go ahead and make a very tiny push, nice and gradual. Up next, let's adjust the saturation of the overall image because this frame is obviously a lot more saturated than I am in the shot. And so something I like to do is hop into the sat versus sat curve, which adjusts the intensity of color in the saturation levels in your shot. So if you have your most saturated areas over here and your least saturated areas over here. So you can really balance out your shot and get a nice looking saturation level. If you lower the saturation of the most saturated areas and raise the saturation of the least saturated areas. And then kind of just find a good level for these. Okay, let's scrub through. It's looking okay so far, but obviously his shot is much darker and there's a lot more contrast in the background. What we can do is add a vignette ourselves, And so something else that I like to do is bring up a color curve, add another mask, add a shape mask, make sure this is selected. This is obviously something you can do with the basic tools, the native tools in Final Cut. And something I like to do because it's almost like you're shaping light in post. And what we're gonna do is go to feather. We'll max this feather out to 90. Then I'm gonna invert it so that everything outside of the mask is adjusted. We'll hop into our curves and I'm gonna create an S curve. And you notice how that's not adjusting where I am. If I needed to, I could track the mask, but luckily I don't move too much, so I don't need to. And then we'll just create a slight S curve just to make the bright areas pop. We'll lower this a little bit more. And I'm just looking at that frame to the left, trying to match how dark it is. Okay, and here's what that does. So that just guides our eyes into what we want to see a little bit more. Uh, it guides our eyes into the subject. Something else I may do is just add some overall contrast that's not adjusted by a mask. There we go. So these two adjustments were just contrast. So we have a, an isolated contrast adjustment to help focus. So we could rename that and then we can put these together. And maybe we should bring up another hue sack curve, make sure it's outside of this group because I still think there just is too much saturation in the shot. We'll take the overall saturation again and lower it. Add another point by pressing command and just crank this pretty low, a nice curve. Here's something else we can do. Let's bring up our vector scope and the vector scope, make sure the skin tone line is up. We'll go to our isolate and we'll Bring it over to my skin. Okay, and you'll notice, I mean, it's definitely hard to see because they're smaller, but my skin is closer to the skin tone line. You'll notice his skin, which is this little bit right here, is swinging more towards yellow. So we can tell that in the scopes, but you can also just see by looking. If you look at my skin compared to his skin, his skin looks uh, way grosser. <laughs> looks like he's ready to throw up. And so let's see if we can match that point. So let's select the hue of my skin. Maybe make a broader selection here. Delete that point. Delete that point. And make sure that these are linear so it's not a smooth adjustment. And let's raise this up until my skin is swinging in that same direction. I know it's hard to see. That looks to be in the right direction, and then we can go ahead and add some of that saturation back. That's why. I was wondering why it didn't look like there was high contrast, because we turned this correction off. I may actually add a bit more contrast into the shot. The last thing we're going to do is try and match this blue light that's on his face. I am using a different color light here, so it's not going to work perfectly, but we can get it close. So let's pull up another color wheel and we will add a mask. We'll pull up an HSL mask and we're gonna select that area as best as possible. Switch to composite mask. It did not do a great selection. Let's try that again. Select this area. Okay, we can use the mask input. And let's try and shift this. 
and then we'll just add some blur quite a lot of blur here we'll hop back into the color wheels we'll take our gain hue slider and we'll push it towards the color that's on him now this does look gross don't worry we're gonna adjust it maybe even raise the exposure of that just a little bit perhaps the saturation a little bit and then now we're gonna hop into the blend modes. This is another thing that's nice about Color Finale is you can adjust the blend modes. So we'll go to lighten maybe, and then perhaps decrease the opacity just a bit. We're not gonna get it looking exactly like the Joker frame, but we can definitely get it close. Maybe a little bit less. A little bit less or possibly hopping back in and giving it more blur and bringing that up that's a better look so here's what we did the first thing we did obviously is transform the log footage to rec 709 then we went in and added contrast and saturation then we color balanced our shot to finish the color correction process then we started our look building so we added a bunch of that teal into the background as well as adjusted my skin tones a bit we made some secondary corrections, mainly to the saturation of the shot. Then we used our luma curves to create more contrast and help focus our eyes in on the subject. Then we made a secondary skin correction to match his kind of gross yellow skin. And then the last thing we did was, which you can take it or leave it, is we added this kind of blue light that's just shining right there on my face. The final thing you could do is use a plugin like Dehancer Pro to go ahead and hop in and make it more of a filmic look. I'm gonna deselect all of these because they adjust our color. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our film grain. And this is kind of a setting I like it at. We're not gonna use elation. We can enable our bloom if you would like. Maybe deselect how much that pops out. Vignette, if you want to add even more of a vignette, you can do that, but we kind of already did that. And let's leave that as is. So this is what that last cinematic correction did. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're interested in learning more about color correcting and color grading, sign up for my color grading masterclass, which we'll be releasing in a few weeks. I'll put the link to that in the description and in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.